Hi there everyone, welcome to this channel. My name is Devansh and I'm the lead tutor at FinTutors. I'm here to present the pre-scene analysis part one for the strategic case study exam in May 2022 and August 2022. This is a very, very specific video that we have created to help you understand the pre-scene company on which your exam questions are going to be based in the May and August attempt for the strategic case study exam. Before I move on, let me tell you a little bit about FinTutors. Now, FinTutors is a SEMA registered tuition provider accredited with SEMA and working with SEMA on very many platforms to increase student pass rates. We are in direct touch with SEMA and working with SEMA to make sure we can help maximum students pass their strategic case study exam. This pre-scene analysis that we have created goes through word by word, step by step of the original pre-scene document that SEMA have released, but it is annoted by us and it is detailed upon by us and it's made our own very personal uh, document that we present to you that can make your studies reach a completely different level. So this video is centered on the pre-scene analysis. Before I start with the pre-scene analysis, let me tell you about the free mini course that we have available for you. Now the free mini course is a course that we created to help as many students as possible gain a full understanding of what this strategic case study exam is. Because there may be many students who are coming into the case study directly. It's only one exam that they're taking or they've got exemptions. So they don't really know what this exam is. And that is why we created a free mini course. This mini course is very, very comprehensive. It has introduction to this exam. So what is the exam structure? The key skills needed for this exam. It gives you a very detailed industry analysis. It gives you the blueprint or the I can statement explanations. It tells you how to write answers, how to approach a question. It gives you, you know, lots and lots of valuable resources. And along with that, we give you a free mini mock exam, which you can take at the end of the course, but it will be personally marked for you and checked for you by my team of tutors. It's absolutely free. We do not charge for this mini course because we want to give you the best possible chance of knowing the details of this exam and then taking the exam confidently. So there's nothing to lose. I'm going to leave the link of this free mini course in the description below at the very, very top. So it will be accessible. You just got to click on it. It will take you to our website and you can start following the mini course. Again, it's fully free. The link is in the description below. This mini course will take your studies to a completely different level. Link is in the description below. Try it now. The purpose of this video was the pre-scene analysis part one. So without any further ado, I'll begin with the pre-scene analysis now. So the first thing that we deal with is the introduction. Now know that in this pre-scene analysis, we're going to keep it very candid. We're going to keep it very, you know, an open line of discussion. Every time we come across something that we feel is important, we'll give you our thought process. We'll give you our thinking. We will give you our own input and relate it to the E3, P3 and F3 syllabus at every opportunity that we get. So know that we have taken the actual SEMA pre-scene. So the actual pre-scene that SEMA has released, that is what we have taken. And then we have added our own annotations and own suggestions, own thought process boxes and made the pre-scene one document, which is like 60 pages plus when you're studying with us which has all the details and all the annotations already put there for you. So you don't have to go through the trouble of writing everything again or, you know, making your own pointers, making your own notes. No, we'll give you everything ready. Then highlighting it, 
making your own summarized pointers from what we have pointed out is what you can do is your wish is something that I will leave up to the student. Our job is to understand the pre-scene in detail. In any way you understand it, I'm okay with it as long as you understand our company to its core. So remember, we have taken the SEMA document as the base, as the core, and then we've added our own suggestions. So any boxes that you see, like the one on your screen, or any, uh, you know, small tiles that you see with different colors is stuff that we have added so that you can remember the important aspects or important ideas in a simple and easy way. Because images, you know, generally stick in a person's mind a little bit more easier than only words. So to not make it too boring, to make it a little bit more interactive, let me put it that way, we've added text boxes in different colors to try to keep your study interesting. But rest assured, we'll go through every single part of the pre-scene in detail, word by word, line by line. And at every stage, we will be relating to your E3 P3 and F3 syllabus. Let me begin with the first part, which is the introduction. So you may already know that the company that has been given to us is called Snack Wheel and all the exam questions will be based on Snack Wheel. And when you do your mocks with me, all my mocks will also be based on Snack Wheel and Snack Wheel only. It will be very, very centered. So Snack Wheel is a quoted company that facilitates home deliveries on behalf of fast food companies across its home country. So firstly, it's a company that deals with deliveries for fast food companies. It's an online food delivery service. Let me put it that way. If you've done the industry analysis with me that I've asked everybody to do first, then you would already have the background of what an online food delivery service company is like. So if keeping that in mind, when you come to the pre-scene, you're already able to relate and make sense of what this market is like, what this industry is like. And that is why we've done this extra industry analysis. So those who have not done my industry analysis yet, I request you to go back and first complete the industry analysis and then start with the pre-scene. But over here, I saw generally two important things. Firstly, it's a quoted company. So let me keep in my mind what a quoted company or a listed company means. Quickly, listed means listed on the stock exchange. So there are obvious advantages. Let me, let me quickly remember two advantages. I have easy access to capital for growth. And I will have enhanced visibility because it's listed. Everybody knows the share price. So everybody knows the performance of the company. The disadvantages would be there will be a lot of reporting requirements, lots of government scrutiny, shareholder scrutiny, if you're not meeting their demands or their rules. So whenever I see an important word, I'll try to create an explanation on it. Here I saw the important word as quoted company. So now I know that my company is quoted. It's listed on the stock exchange. Couple advantages, couple disadvantages are in my mind with me. The second important word I saw over here is we facilitate home deliveries on behalf of fast food companies in our home country only, which means right now we are present in our home country only. We are a local company. We do not currently cater to the global market, a different country. No, we only cater to our home country country. So this is important for us to understand because as we go deeper into the pre-scene, we will see if our company has an opportunity to start to expand into different geographies. Do we have that opportunity? We'll try to see when we understand the nature of our company deeper into the pre-scene. If there is an opportunity for expansion, then surely your currency management risk management, requirements of capital, all of these will then start to come into the picture and it's a very realistic exam scenario. They can say that we've started to, you know, provide our services, for example, in another country. How will we deal with this and we'll be earning money in a different currency? How will we deal with this currency risk management, for example? 
Also, we may need to raise capital. How will we raise capital? Will it be through debt, through equity? This is straight from your F3 syllabus. So if you've not done your F3 revision, all of this would be feeling alien right now. And that is why I always tell my students to first start with revision, begin with revision, and follow the learning documents and the revision material that we provide. So at every stage, if I see an opportunity for the company, and if I see an opportunity to link it to our E3, P3, and F3 syllabus, I will always touch base on it, and I will showcase it to you like I have done over here. Next. Consumers can order food by app or through Snack Wheels website. So like I said, online food delivery. So because this clearly tells me that Snack Wheel has two digital products. First could be the application. Second is the website. Now website management, app management, managing your media presence, today's modern world social media presence, is key for any business to do well. And this brings in my topic of app management, data management, big data, data analysis. Because when you have an application and a website where people are ordering food to their house or their office through their credit cards or debit cards, you are gathering so much customer information. So how are you using this information is one thought process that comes to my mind when I realize that my company has an application as well as a website. We are going to speak about big data as we go deeper into the pre-scene. But right now, this is what I want to bring forward to you. Next, you are a senior manager in Snackwheel's finance function. So they have given you the role of a senior manager. They have given you the role of a person who is going to be at the senior position in the company who deals with long term strategic issues. So whenever you are presenting your answer, you will be, you know, you will most probably be answering to one of the board of directors, one of the directors of the company. So to give a satisfactory answer, you should know very well the basics, the core, the culture of your company. Only if you know that will you be able to give a good and satisfactory answer, right? Otherwise, how will you be able to do justice to your company? You're a senior manager. So for a senior manager, the first competency is to know the company's business in and out. And from our exam perspective, it means that you should know the pre-scene very, very, very clearly. That is why the importance of the pre-scene comes to the fore now. If you don't know the pre-scene well, then all the problems will start to trickle down from there. And most important for the strategic case study exam is pre-scene knowledge. And that is why we are, you know, repeatedly providing so many details when we go through the pre-scene with you. So you report directly to the board of directors, like I mentioned, and advice on special projects and strategic matters. So you advise on projects and on matters of strategy. Now, all your strategy related topics, strategy, strategic development, strategic decision making is part of your E3 syllabus. So again, when the word strategy comes in, it directly takes me to my E3 syllabus, which is the most important pillar for this exam. E3 is the most important pillar. Snack Wheel is based in West area, a developed country that has an active and well regulated stock exchange. Now, firstly, they're telling you that you are located in a fictional country. So first and foremost, this is a fictional company. Snack wheel is fictional. There is nothing real or, or there's no real company called snack wheel that exists. Seema have created it as a fictional company in a fictional country, which is West area. And they're telling you that this is a developed country. So you can link it, you can think of it as other developed countries around the world. So your Western countries, Japan, uh, Europe, North America, consider generally developed countries. Now when I think about this, what does this tell me? This tells me that my company is situated in a developed economy, which means the people generally 
will be you know having a strong culture strong background educated they will have benefits of uh, like technology they will have benefits of internet penetration all of this clearly tells me that the demand factors for my company snack wheel are going to be high because the population has the disposable income has the technological background has the educated background and has you know just government infrastructure in place that can enable a technological based company like snack wheel to provide its services and because snack wheel is going to be providing these services and the customers have the disposable income so from the very start you have a competitive advantage with you because you are located in a country that is you know well developed so it's your comparative advantage you surely want to position position yourself in a place where people are going to have a good experience using your service you don't want to be in a country that's going through an economic crisis or doesn't have good internet penetration how will people order their food online if the internet is not good for example so being in a developed country gives you a competitive advantage from the start itself then they tell me that west area's currency is the w dollars and west area company law requires you to prepare your financial statements according to the ifrs just some general information that they always give so we'll absorb it now the next section that we are speaking about is the fast food industry section now before you started with this pre scene i have advocated and told everybody to go through my industry analysis my industry snapshot my breakdown of the industry which tells you which are the important trends which are the important geographies which are the important uh, channels through which this online food delivery service is really working and booming what they've done over here is as part of this pre scene which seema have released they have also given us some industry background of the fast food industry of the uh, food delivery industry as well but because you've done my industry analysis you'll already be little bit ahead one step forward in terms of knowing this industry as a whole but because they have given it to us as part of this pre scene it's our job to analyze it our job to go through it so let's begin so fast food restaurants aim to serve food quickly and on demand that can often be achieved by selling menu items that can be cooked in batches and then kept hot often by keeping them under bright lamps that radiate heat so for a very simple example if you think about mcdonald's french fries or any other french fries you know they're cooked in a batch kept under a yellow light keep them heated as soon as an order comes in they're packed and sent out so they're just giving us stuff that we already know as part of this fast food industry because every one of us would have experienced fast food would like fast food would eat fast food so you know what it is but from a technical perspective because it's given in the pre scene we're supposed to go through it so please do not skip anything that you know I'm, i know this i may know this all of this is easy comfortable that's fine but still go through it with full clarity because you may never know what link you can bring up from this to your e3 p3 and f3 syllabus we've already done the links for you but we don't want you to skip anything so having such items ready made with fresh batches in preparation throughout the day means that more customers can be served at busy times even if you you know at the most busiest time at for example let's say dinner time order from a fast food restaurant it would come to you in 30 minutes 40 minutes for example there are other fast food items designed to be quick to prepare for example pizza can be made by spreading a portion of sauce across a ready made pizza base sprinkling cheese and it directly goes into a preheated oven it's ready in a few minutes the time that actually will take is the delivery guy to pick it up and then deliver it to you fast food restaurants are designed to serve customers as quickly as possible so this will have to be replicated in my delivery partners as well if the food is ready but the delivery partner does not go to pick it up 
and then deliver it to you it doesn't make any sense a very systematic ordering process with quick response and delivery agent assignment systems will be keen and will be very important for your competitive advantage in this market so any business that is part of this online food delivery market should have a good ordering process remember we are not talking about snack wheel we are talking about just the background industry right now we'll specifically speak about snack wheel deeper into the pre scene right now just some background is being given to you very clearly we know that this industry will be technologically motivated as we know everything in this industry will be technology based and there will be new enhancements every day because technology is ever evolving right next many have a counter that is designed many restaurants i'm saying fast food restaurants will have a counter designed that is so that staff can take orders collect the payment and deliver food as quickly as possible the seating may be provided so that customers can eat their meals but it's slightly uncomfortable so you don't sit there chit chat you know you leave as soon as you have finished your meal that's the idea behind a fast food joint meals are usually served in disposable containers customers are then free to take their food away and eat it elsewhere for example if you buy a mcdonald's burger you'll see it's only wrapped in a simple paper right so disposable containers are preferred in the fast food industry this can be seen as one of the drawbacks as majority of the customers are now moving towards sustainability people are now thinking about their impact on the environment so you know if you are a fast food delivery company then you can get the customers perspective to the restaurants and convince the restaurants to be more sustainable in their packaging for example if anybody orders a, a meal through snack wheel it has to be packed in something that is recyclable you can force the restaurant or you can you know have relations with the restaurant and then obviously some customers will be prepared to pay a little bit extra because of your sustainable credentials so companies are being pressured to become more concerned about the environment through their business decisions so your ethics your csr corporate social responsibility comes into the picture here and this is straight from your e3 syllabus next customers who eat their meals in the restaurant can dispose of their containers in the bins provided before they leave so if you eat it in the restaurant you throw it in the bin and leave there is no need for staff to collect and wash the dirty dishes you'll never see a dish at a fast food restaurant at most restaurant staff will only have to remove any litter and wipe down table tops with antiseptic sprays so it's very quick turnaround that's the idea fast food is also designed to be quick to eat making food easy to bite and chew encourages customers to eat more quickly again that encourages customers to finish their meals and leave as quickly as possible so new customers can take their seat now fast food items are generally made with little or no fiber in their ingredients and they usually contains a sauce that will make the food moist so it's easy to chew easy to swallow bread will always be light and airy so they'll make it quick quicker for you to eat easier for you to eat the ease and convenience of purchase makes fast food popular you can get a sandwich quickly you can get a burger quickly you can get a pizza quickly it can be purchased and eaten for lunch during the working day or breakfast on the way to work as well consumers may also be keen to eat a quick meal to save time for some other reasons perhaps dinner on the way to meet friends or family whatever so over here the main idea is ease and convenience this has to be replicated in your food delivery app food delivery platform as well because if the platform is not easy to use nobody is going to want to spend their time on it many consumers enjoy fast food because of the factors that make it easy to eat the sauces make it easy to chew but also enhance the flavor the lighter breads used in the buns and sandwiches make for a pleasant texture 
and also create the impression that the restaurant has been generous with its fillings. Actually, it's a very light bread, so the volume is more, but it's going to be very easy for you to eat, which gives you the impression that the burger is big. But, you know, it's not really. It's made in a way that looks big. The efficiencies associated with making and selling the fast food means that it tends to be significantly cheaper than alternative forms of eating out. So it's fast food is generally cheap as well. In addition, fast food outlets, like, unlike traditional restaurants, do not feel a need to incur unnecessary costs to create the environment, you know, create, have lots of good music, have ambient lighting or have a comfortable place to sit. They don't have to go through any of those costs. Fast food restaurants can operate as independent outlets, but some may belong to national global chains as well. You know, your KFC, Burger King, McDonald's, Domino's. With heavy advertising and a consistent brand image. Customers of chains often know the menus of their favorite chains and know what they will order before entering a restaurant because they're familiar with that change. So this will be a case of linked demand or directly linked demand for you as a fast food online delivery company. So if fast food chains grow, more customers will want to order their favorite foods, which in turn increases demand for the food delivery service. If fast food restaurants develop new items which become very famous, more people will want to eat it, more people will want to eat it, the more orders they will place, it's your benefit as well. So it's a linked demand over here. You cannot directly influence the demand. Fast food companies will be an important stakeholder for businesses running food delivery services. So for me as Snack Wheel, one important stakeholder will be fast food companies or any kind of restaurants. And I have highlighted this deeper into the pre-scene as well because if the restaurant does well or if the restaurant becomes famous popular dish becomes famous popular automatically fast food delivery orders will start to grow so managing relationships with this stakeholder will be very very important so your stakeholder management comes into the picture this is directly from your e3 syllabus now, there are very many varieties of fast food. These often vary according to local cultures and taste. The following types of fast food are very popular in West area. So now they're giving you what is popular in West area. First and foremost, burger restaurants are very famous in West area. I won't tell you what a burger restaurant is because I'm very sure you know what a burger is. You'll have your veg option, non-veg option and fries. Then there is a pizza restaurant. Then there are pizza restaurants which are famous. So again, I don't have to tell you what a pizza is, but the toppings and all of that is a big choice that a customer has when he chooses to order a pizza. We know that. Thirdly, there are sandwich restaurants. Now, sandwich restaurants generally offer customers a different choice of sandwich, different choice of bread, cold sandwich, hot sandwich. Up to you. This is famous in West area. Next, there are chicken restaurants for those who like non-veg and, uh, you know, would want to experience different pieces of chicken which are sold. That's an option as well, which is famous in West area. Next, you have bakery chains as well. So your pastries, sausage rolls and all other bakery products are also famous in West area. Most fast food restaurants also offer a range of soft drinks or side dishes such as fries or potato wedges or desserts. These generally share the characteristics of the main meal which means it's quick and delicious as well. But they are supplied in disposable packing. We already spoke about ethics and CSR before. Now what do I have to take in from here? From a case study perspective, you may be thinking, you know, why are they telling me all of this? I already know what a fast food restaurant is, fast food chain is. But they said these are popular foods in West area. Now, if these are popular fast foods in West area, obviously your company, Snack Wheel, will be delivering these kind of foods 
to your customer because this is what is popular. So let me know that these are the five. So this paragraph rather lets me know that these are five popular foods which my online delivery food app will be delivering. All restaurants offer a range of meat free and other options to meet specific dietary needs of customers. Now, though all of this is evident that the market focuses on unhealthy fast food items, which are quickly prepared and quickly eaten by customers. Also, what you can do is promotion of healthy eating options with more sustainable packaging could be seen as an opportunity for fast food delivery service. It could be one way you create a niche for yourself. For example, most fast food delivery or most online food delivery apps will be promoting these fast food restaurants. Well and good, you should do it. It's a big part of the business. But how you can be different is on your app, you can also promote healthy eating options as a separate part or a separate you know tab or a separate promotion because many people are now becoming health conscious and you can include sustainable packaging as well that sets you apart as a food delivery service so whenever i see something important an idea an opportunity for your company i'm always going to point it out this way and this is how the entire pre-scene is done in details word by word step by step line by line so we don't miss out on anything and that's the advantage of studying with a registered tuition provider like us. The Westerian fast food industry generated sales of 172 billion during the year ended 31st December 2021 with sales from 55,000 outlets spread across the country. So it's a huge country, huge market and obviously clearly tells you that opportunities are galore for you which we also learned from the industry analysis so the market is huge opportunities will be coming your way so the customer segmentation and understanding the perspective of customers placing the orders is going to be key who are your customers where are they ordering from what kind of food are they ordering the more market analysis we do and use technology to support us, the better we can serve this market. So again, this brings up the concept of data analysis, big data, which I will be speaking about with an example, a little bit deeper into the pre-scene, but it's straight point to your E3 syllabus. Fast food has grown steadily for many years and the number of outlets increased by 36% in 10 years. So it's an industry that is booming in your country can be seen as a very positive sign for you. Industry surveys show that there are 70% Vestarians aged over 20 who eat fast food at least once per week. 23% eat fast food three times or more. So it's in the culture. It's something that people are readily accepting. Generally, younger consumers eat fast food more frequently than older consumers. So then they've given us a graph which says percentage of population that eats fast food at least once per week. If you look at the 20 to 39 age group, 90% of the population is at least going to have fast food once per week. That's your target area. That's your target segment. 40 to 59, 70%. And 60 plus 40 percent so you can see that it is a culture it is a market where fast food is accepted people like fast food and people are influenced by it that's why they're ordering right 90 percent of the chance there is going to be at least one order of fast food or there's uh, you know customers age 20 to 39 are at least going to eat fast food once in the week is a very good probability right so this gives us a focus area and can help us develop better services with better growth opportunities if we focus on the segments which, the, which have the largest market share. For example, the 20 to 39 age group is where I'll be focusing my marketing on because these are the people who are regularly, you know, want to eat fast food. So th there could be a possibility that they order the fast food from your app if the marketing is on point. 
if the focus is on point. So focusing on segments and curating to their needs specifically is a key competency for any company and it's going to be a key competency for your company snack wheel as well if it wants to do good in this market next section we speak about is the fast food home deliveries now specifically before this we were speaking about the fast food industry itself now we are speaking about the fast food home deliveries industry specifically now the phrase home delivery applies to delivery made to the customer's chosen location. It can be their house, their office or anywhere else. Home delivery services started back in the 1990s when a major burger chain created its own telephone ordering service where a customer could call, place their order and pay by credit card when placing their order. So for different countries, this market has different prospects. Online food ordering and delivery service can be considered a relatively recent development. Earlier, it was the conventional way of ordering, calling the restaurant, placing your order. Online food delivery can be said to be relatively recent. So this market seems to be in a revolutionary growth stage. Fast food home deliveries were always happening. But the revolution was when everything came online. So your external market analysis to do well in this industry will be very important because you don't know what the next major trend is going to be. Will people be delivering the food or will it be robots or drones or what? We don't know. So you need to have a good external market analysis if you are part of this market and everything related to the external market analysis, which is your Pestel or the Porter's Five Forces model is part of your E3 syllabus. So again, something important and it's pointed out by us. So this was a major success back in the 1990s and was soon copied by other fast food chains. Customers enjoyed the ability to obtain fast food from their favorite restaurants without leaving their house. The market for home deliveries grew, driven in part by widespread ownership and the use of smartphones with Wi-Fi or internet connections. These gave customers access to restaurant websites and that enabled them to place orders online and then pay for them online. So the revolution came when everything was offered online. They also enabled customers to download apps that simplified the ordering and the payment process altogether. So like I said, the revolution is recent. Snack wheel created West Area's first independent home delivery platform in 2007. So it's relatively recent, but Snackwheel was the first company to develop a home delivery platform. So this tells me a lot about my company, that my company could be the first mover in this market, can be considered to be the first mover in this market, and it brings about many advantages. You know, you're the first mover, the first company, you become the pioneer of this market, showcases the strong innovation ability of my company. So the culture of my company is going to be find a problem, find a solution to it, which is a very important skill in today's modern world. Previously, fast food chains that wish to offer home delivery had established their own delivery service using their own website and employing their own people. So this was like the traditional model, pick up the phone, call the restaurant, order from there. But Snackwheel disrupted that approach to home delivery by creating a website that enabled customers to access several fast food options on their phone or on their website, for example. So disruption is being spoken about over here. And what does disruption mean? You completely and fundamentally change the way the business used to work. Earlier, it was very traditional, pick up the phone, you know, call the restaurant, place your order. But after snack wheel came into the picture, all the menus are on your phone, order from the phone. So the business was changed altogether. This brings great advantages in terms of capturing the market because you are the first in this market and it helps you develop a brand as well. So this digital disruption that we are speaking about is part of your E3 syllabus. Your topic is part of your E3 syllabus. 
food ordered through this website would be collected from a restaurant operated by the chain of snack wheels couriers and delivered to the customer directly and this proved to be attractive to the customer as well as the restaurant so remember right now the subheading that we saw was food delivery industry we spoke about first we did the introduction section second section was the fast food industry third section is food delivery industry so we are not yet exclusively speaking about snack wheel while doing this industry information or while giving us this industry information they are giving us snapshots of what snack wheels culture is what snack wheel does what snack wheel came into the when snack wheel came into the market and all of that we are not exclusively speaking about snack wheel yet that's going to come later into the pre scene when there will be a separate snack wheel subheading and after that we'll be specifically speaking about snack wheel right now this is just industry knowledge that they're giving you so know that snack wheel has two major competitors both of whom provide very similar services and their name is munch bike and truck bites now munch bike was launched in 2009 truck bites was launched in 2011 remember snack wheel came to the market in 2007 so your major competitors only came into the market 2 years after you so that is you know that means for 2 years there was unprecedented market growth and you were the only large player in this west area market brings a very big competitive advantage to you but now these two competitors can be considered as your brand competitors why because they are doing the same thing that you are doing they are offering the same services to the same customers and the same environment as well the only real difference is the brand and some cultural functional characteristics but otherwise if i want to order food i can do it from snack wheel i can do it from munch bike i can do it from truck bite so competition analysis in this market is going to be key because the margins are very tight in this market and we have spoken about this in our industry analysis section as well so competition is going to be an important characteristic of this market which you will have to manage now snack wheel and its competitors describe themselves as platforms in recognition of the fact that platforms are defined as online or physical environments that connect different groups and offer benefits based on participation of others in the platform which means a platform is one that connects two groups of people over here you are connecting the restaurant with the customer making it easy hence you are called a platform now home delivery platforms share the following characteristics remember like i told you this over here we are speaking about the broader industry we haven't started to speak about snack wheel yet So first, customers place orders online using their mobile phone, tablets or computers. Apps are promoted heavily through advertising and social media. Customers can create their account that includes their payment details and it may be possible to pay by cash depending on their location. So we all of us may have used a food delivery app so we know how it works. The focus words here are all the customer data is collected plus heavy marketing on social media so your marketing innovative marketing techniques will be important second the platforms offer access to a range of different restaurant menus generally one from each major category like you know there'll be two three burger joints two three pizza joints for example that means that a family or a group of friends can order from different restaurants based on their preference and there will be one payment method fine step number 3 the platform's software identifies the most suitable restaurant branch from which this order will be fulfilled details are transmitted to the restaurants which have then the responsibility of preparing the food and then packaging it the food is collected by a courier who delivers it to the customer This is how generally it works they're just explaining the method to you. Now couriers are equipped with insulated boxes with battery powered heating elements to keep the food you know fresh. 
couriers are required to provide their own vehicles they have their own vehicles these vehicles are not owned by food delivery platforms platforms hold couriers responsible for ensuring that their vehicles are road worthy and that they are insured for business purposes so you are transferring the risk on to the courier he is not your you know he he's not going to be considered as a full time employee we are going to speak about that as we move on but he is also going to be providing his own vehicle at his own cost and at his own responsibility so food delivery platforms have transferred the risk here most most platforms aim to ensure that food is delivered between 30 to 40 minutes if customers order from more than one restaurant then the food may be collected and delivered by more than one courier as well whatever is best and efficient for the system so the method is being explained here on how it works platforms are sometimes referred to as portals as well to reflect the fact that they provide access to restaurant menus that can accept orders they are also referred to as aggregator portals to reflect the fact that they aggregate or combine access to multiple restaurants through one single app so these are just some different names which they end up using now this is important for us to know from the case study perspective because you know sometimes in your mock questions or sometimes in my discussions as well i'll use the names as i'll use the aggregator portal i'll use i'll say that our aggregator portal is you know down for example not working for example so at that point if you've gone through the pre scene and you know what an aggregator portal means you know that it's the same as our platform there's nothing real different so this will be a word that you know and it won't throw you off so sometimes what happens is students see a word which they don't know of and then they get anxious they question their knowledge when actually it's nothing really you know too difficult so it's important that we go through everything in this pre scene so that we are not uh, flustered by anything that comes up now a very very important suggestion coming up from our end which is called supplementary reading this supplementary reading is very very important because it's something extra that we have added this is not part of your pre scene analysis that seema have released it's something extra that we do because we felt we should give you some real world industry some real world example to link it better so that you understand snack wheels business so up until now we have been speaking about how this entire industry is going to be technology based technologically motivated how this industry is going to be you know can hone in the full benefits of big data but now let me give you more specific examples so for this reason we have created something extra which is the supplementary reading paragraph which i'll go with through with you so how is big data in the online food industry really being used some must know facts so with the option of ordering online from their favorite restaurants customers are spoiled for choice a lot of data is generated when a customer requests food online the kind of food that they're ordering the time of ordering the taste that the taste of their preferences and so on people are generally fussy about food and by analyzing the data food delivery startups like snack wheel can cater to delightful experience for their users having a robust big data analytics system can have a very positive impact on any food delivery business so how does big data analytics benefit food delivery apps first and foremost they can help you help the restaurant rather improve their menu because your website will gather all the information your app will gather all the information about what customers are ordering what they are liking so you can suggest restaurants that okay start to have these dishes as well and by changing the menu items restaurants can boost their own efficiency and if restaurants are doing well food delivery apps will automatically do well so the first way big data can be used is by improving the menu and by giving improving menu ideas secondly you can provide faster deliveries if you are using big data how 
So if a food delivery app can provide faster delivery to its customers compared to its competitors, people are always going to choose you. And if you have a big data analytics system, a food delivery app can monitor various elements like traffic, roadblocks, climate conditions, and give the shortest possible way for the courier to get to your place to give you your favorite dish. So big data can help you with this as well. The artificial intelligence and machine learning systems can provide real time updates so that the delivery person can get to you quickly. Thirdly, you can analyze customer sentiment as well. If you have a social media preference, which major big, uh, which major online food delivery companies will have, then they will be able to manage and understand the social media sentiment in a better way because they will be able to analyze what customers are speaking about you or customers are talking about your delivery people, your app. All of this can help you analyze how you can serve the customer better. So big data analytics software will compile and analyze all the mentions of your brand across social media handles like Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, which will give you good decision making data. Last but not the least, you can predict demand as well through smart algorithms. A food delivery app can also predict the customer's next order based on what they have been ordering in the past. So this will help you, you know, uh, entice the customer by let's say giving them a discount. If you know what he's going to order, you can give him a discount. Secondly, if you know that majority of orders at 8 p.m. are coming from this area, you can keep your delivery people in that area. So as soon as an order comes in, they can quickly pick it up. So as you can see, using big data for a food delivery business can have very many benefits. So why am I telling you all of this? What's the point of all of this? Now the point of all of this is that in this industry, big data opportunities are huge, are great. So when we move deeper into the pre-scene and start analyzing our company, when the subheading of Snack Wheel comes up and we are exclusively speaking about Snack Wheel, we will see if our company Snack Wheel harnesses the full potential of big data or not. Like do we have any big data systems in place? If we don't, then we should because big data has so many advantages that we just spoke about in this brief discussion. So the whole idea was to give you a mindset that in this industry, technology is everything. And one way technology is taking this business forward is big data. Keep this idea very clearly in your mind. Now we come back to the pre-scene. The supplementary reading section is complete. We come back to the pre-scene now. Now most platforms offer customers a range of payment options. Smartphone and tablet apps can be linked to your credit cards, debit cards, so payment is automatic. And some customers who do not want to pay or link their card directly, they can put in the card number manually every time. Some customers can also choose to pay by cash if it's an available option. So before we move on, we spoke about this in the industry analysis section where the online payment section was showing a very strong growth. People are moving towards online more and more because it's easy, you know, comfortable, easily, you know, you can easily pay. So this also brings in the topic of confidential data, data security, data management, which is very, very important from your P3 syllabus. How can data be pr protected? How should it be protected? The cyber security framework from your P3 syllabus becomes very, very important here because of the nature of our business. So as I said, some restaurants permit the couriers to accept cash payments for the meals as well. The platform tracks all the sales made on behalf of each restaurant. The platforms are agreed and entitled to a commission. So the restaurants, as we spoke about stakeholder, stakeholders before, the restaurants are also very important stakeholders for us. And it will be important to manage this relationship because our major revenue source is going to be commission. So managing stakeholder relations and relationship management is important. Again, the platform tracks the amounts collected 
on behalf of each restaurant from card and cash payments and they remit the net amount due after removing any commissions or after removing any rent for dark kitchens on regular basis so you may be thinking what are dark kitchens it's a new term so some platforms operate dark kitchens which are basically large storage and food preparation facilities that they choose to rent out to one or more fast food restaurants these dark kitchens are divided so that each fast food chain let's say it's a big complex and is divided into five parts for example so each part will be for one fast food chain where they store their food and where they prepare their food and from there itself it directly goes out for delivery so it's a important and a very innovative concept which is also called cloud kitchens so moving on when we go to especially speaking about snack wheel we will see do we operate any dark kitchens or cloud kitchens do we have that opportunity if not then it is surely that then it is surely something i can suggest something i can keep in my mind and then i can suggest as an opportunity so the fast food chains hire their own cooks to ensure that the food is made at the dark kitchen but it's exactly same as it would in a normal conventional restaurant remember dark kitchens are not restaurants they do not have any seating it's only to prepare the food and ready for delivery go out platforms build dark kitchens in areas where they expect demand is sufficient to justify their construction let's say city centers or metro hubs so data is going to be a play a very big part in this industry and if you analyze the data well if you have a good sophisticated big data system then for sure you will know where the demand is high when it is high and you will be able to create your own dark kitchens they are attractive to fast food chains that require additional capacity to relieve the pressure from their conventional outlets because the conventional outlet is already serving customers who go there and place their order they can also be a cost effective way to establish a presence and also generate revenues the platforms do not necessarily require a great deal of local infrastructure now they're speaking about platforms which means my business they can operate it from anywhere because you know it's just an app people download the app your courier downloads the app so you don't really need a huge office space for this platform which is online food delivery platforms that's what they're speaking about and because they say that we don't require lots and lots of detailed infrastructure detailed investment in infrastructure it clearly tells me that the barriers to entry in this industry are quite low because huge investments are not needed i can create an app sitting in my house as well you know i can have 20 employees sitting at their own house creating this app i don't really need everybody physically present so the barriers to entry in this industry can be seen as low and because barriers are low competition will be high we already spoke about the competitive nature of this industry so see how at every step we are analyzing we are detailing and making sure we understand every part of this company without skipping anything with that we have come to the end of the first part of our pre-seen analysis i thank you for being here you will see that in the first part of the pre-seen we showcase to you exactly how detailed our entire pre-seen analysis is going to be and every single part is covered in the same way the second part of the pre-seen focuses on the functions of the company the third part of the pre scene focuses on the financials so a whole lot more is to come we have very wide variety of material we have very wide variety of mocks that we offer with our personalized support so i am hoping that you will find all of this helpful my email is on the screen my personal whatsapp number is on the screen you can reach us for more information you can visit our website if you've not already but signing up early is important as our seats fill up plus 
it gives you flexibility in using our material. So thank you for being here. That was the first part of the pre-scene. I hope you have found it helpful.